Hey brothers and sisters, this is going to be a fun time because I got someone on the phone. Uh, his name, his channel is Faith Warriors for God, I think. Is that how you changed it? Is that? Yeah, fa yeah Faith Warriors of God. Okay, Faith Warriors of God. But this is our brother Broderick, um, and I'm going to be doing an interview with him. I have done some interviews in the past. I hope some people, if you're new to my channel, um, you know, my channel is about being a born-again Christian, which makes you an overcomer, that you have defeated your sin by the blood of Jesus Christ, who is the only way to get to heaven. He is the only one. So um, in the book of Revelation, which is uh, what we're going to be talking about, we're going to be talking about a lot of things, but in the book of Revelation, we believe the Bible is and errant and absolutely true and the overcomers are um the ones that are be going in the rapture so we broderick and i believe in a pre-tribulation rapture and um i wanted to he 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 offered to come on and uh tell his story his testimony and uh i look forward to hearing what he wants to talk about but he is I've watched a lot of his videos. Actually, the first video I ever saw of you, Broderick, was uh, he'd had a, a left behind dream. So anyway, without further ado, this is Brother Broderick. Say hello. Hello, everyone. Hope everybody's doing really, really good out there today. Um, so yeah, I, am, I, I, I currently live in California. And yes, um, I love the Lord uh, with all of my heart and soul and mind. Um, God is awesome. He is amazing. Um, like Sister Terry said, he is the way, the truth, and the life. We 100% um, need God in our life because without Jesus in our life, we we're pretty much done for. I mean, we we truly, truly need Jesus. So, so my story: How did I come into the Lord? How did I meet the Lord? How did Jesus reveal Himself to me? Um, well, I know when I was in high school, you know, because I was born and raised in church. You know, my mom and dad, you know, you know, they took us to church, and uh, we was affiliated with a denomination um, called Church of God in Christ. You know, it's predominantly on the West Coast, but I believe they have some and I know they have like convocations and things like that in Memphis, Tennessee, um, and things like that. So, you know, I was born and raised in church, you know, and, uh, you know, but just because you're born and raised in church does not mean that you are saved. You have to repent and believe in Jesus Christ as your savior to be saved. So, but I had the foundation in the sense of I knew who Jesus was, you know, but I just never really, really followed Jesus, you know, when I was in high school, you know, and I kept on promising God, Lord. Let me graduate from high school and I will give my life to you. And I kept on promising God that. I kept on promising him that. And then as time went on, 12th grade year, I had it in the back of my mind. Remember, when you graduate, you know, you got to get saved. So here it comes. Graduated June 1998. Here we go. Went to church the following Sunday. Pastor said, anybody want to get saved? I said, nope. Oh. <laughs> nope. Don't want to get saved. Okay. I was one of those people that was taking advantage of God's grace, which a lot of people do. You know, we take advantage of God's grace, and that was me taking advantage of God's grace. So one day I had a dream that I was in hell. Yeah. Oh, I had a you dream did? That I, I, so so this, this is how I found Jesus. I had a dream that I was in hell. Um, so in the dream, I was uh, laying in my bunk bed. So me, so me and my younger brother, I slept on the, I slept on the top, and he slept on the bottom. Um, so in a dream, I had a, so in a dream, I was laying in my bunk bed, and all of a sudden, the whole scene supernaturally changed. I was in straight darkness, all darkness, couldn't see nobody. I only can hear people screaming, screaming, yeah. crying. They were saying, "Let me out! Let me out! Let me out!" Everybody was screaming, and you couldn't see. Like if you put your hand in front of your face, you could not see your hand. It was that dark. Oh my goodness! It was so dark, and then all of a sudden. The dream supernaturally switched back um, to me being in a bunk bed. I got off the bunk bed in the dream, and I woke my brother up. That was on the bottom, on the bottom bunk, and I said, "I said, hey, I said, hey, I just had a dream. I was in hell." He said, "You lying? Why are you lying like this?" I said, "No, I really had a dream that I was in hell." And I told him, "I am going to church next Sunday, and I am giving my life to the Lord." So that following Sunday, after the preacher taught about Jesus Christ, repentance of sin and all those things. When he said, um, do anybody want to be saved? Me and my wife, you know, at, me and my wife raised our hand at the same time. And we said, yes, yes. But remember this, I graduated in 98. Okay. 
Uh-huh. We didn't give our life to the Lord until year 2000. So two years, almost two years after I graduated, here I am, kept telling God, I'm going to get saved. I'm going to get saved. I'm going to get saved. And the thing that prompted me to get saved, because I say this to today, Sister Terry, what if he would have left me in hell? That vision, what if he would have left me there? Right. Way back in 98. He, what if he would have left he me there? He could have struck you dead that day for not doing what you had told him you were going to do. Yeah. 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 He could have like really left me there. So I'm grateful to the Lord. I'm grateful to the Lord. So I've been following God since, um, you know, 2000. You know, he called me to the ministry um, a little bit closer to 2001, you know, and I've just been teaching God's word. So, but one of the things that brought me to your channel, um, Sister Terry, was um, the remarriage and adultery. The remarriage and the, no, 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 divorce or remarriage, sorry. Was remarriage because so. Hey, hey, I got a question for you, actually, though. Yes. Yes. Um, and when you had this dream, you were living at home with your brother. Yeah, my parents. Yes. With your parents. And when you said your wife, you weren't married at the time when you had no, the dream. No, no, You just no, meant this was no. like your girlfriend at yeah, the time. Yeah, my girlfriend. Girlfriend right. and stuff like because that. Because I remember yeah. you were high school yeah. sweethearts like I yes. was a high school sweetheart and yes. everything. So, yes. I mean, honestly, I have to ask the question because when I got saved at 45, God was telling me about my... Um, fornication. I didn't know the word fornication, but he was mm-hmm. telling me about my premarital sex that I had mm-hmm. uh, uh, starting when I went to college, and I mm-hmm. I was I was seventeen when I started going going to college, and it was with my husband to be, but it was like, oh, you know, we're going to college. We, you know, we love each other. We're going to get married someday, but but you know, it's okay with God. You know, we're Christians. We're okay with God. And mm-hmm. so it's okay because eventually, you know, we are committed to each other. But as 45 year old, when I'm 45, he's telling me, no, you know, if I had died from, you know, from when I gave my virginity to my husband, if I had died from then until I was 45 years old, you know, it's 20, 23 years of marriage at that point, or almost 23 years of marriage, I would have gone to hell. Yeah. Because it was written down on my account. So when so when you gave your life to Christ in two thousand, when mm-hmm. did you when did you marry your wife? No, 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 no. So, 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 so remember, um, so remember, I had the dream in ninety eight. So me and my wife got we got married um, in ninety nine. In nineteen ninety nine, me and her got married. Oh, okay. In, in, in ninety nine, so obviously we still wasn't saved, and we was. Still, you know, still together. You oh, know, so okay. we remember we didn't give our life to the Lord until 2000. Oh, so, okay. me and her, so me and her got married in 1999. Okay. Okay. But, but, but see, but again, in fornication, mm-hmm. you know, you see that. And just like you said, I could have went to hell because here I am. I told God while I was in high school that I would give my life to you if you allow me to graduate. Mm-hmm. And here it is. Graduation time come. And... Didn't give my life to him in 98. And here it is, 2000, year 2000, we finally gave our life to the Lord. But that whole two-year period, we could have been cut off, you know? We could have been in hell because we were still fornicating and right. and doing things like that. And, you know, it doesn't, again, like I said, it doesn't mean, you know, just because you're born and raised in a church don't mean that you're automatically saved. Right. And I was kind of using that a little bit. Well, I know Jesus. You know, I know Jesus. You know, I know who he is. I know he's the son of God. And. And things like that and you know just trying to take advantage and that's when god showed me that dream you better get it right because if you don't get it right you will lose your soul in hell mm-hmm. i know i know god is a loving god he's a caring and compassionate and graceful god but we also we have to understand that god is also a god of judgment right and he is he is a righteous and holy everybody only looks at the the love characteristic of god but they gotta understand that god is also a god of judgment and he is a holy and pure God. And when we were in fornication, we was not pure right. in his eyesight. And it's only by his grace and mercy that he gave us opportunity to even give our life to him because of the, the broken vows that I said to God. I vowed to him that I would give my life to him, and I didn't do it. And and you put it off for two years, really? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I was really... So I was really um, gambling um, with my life right there because yeah. you know I think that's why to this day I'm eternally grateful to the Lord because what if he would have left me 
in hell when he showed me that dream. I think about that to this day, Sister Terry, to this day. Right. What if? What if? You know, I wouldn't have no kids. I would never be with my wife for 23 years, which I miss her very much. She was an awesome and amazing woman. Um, yeah, for people who have... don't know, his wife, uh, when what? When did she pass away? Like six months ago, nine months ago? Um, eight months ago in, eight. in November. In November. Okay. So, yeah. And, they ha and you have seven children, right? We, we have seven children together, yeah. Yeah, so. Yeah. Um, and, uh, well, you go ahead. It go, you were so, so when you, when you, when y'all got, um, I mean, did y'all talk about it ahead of time that y'all were going to, yes. I mean, I mean, after I told her the dream, after uh -huh. I told her the dream that I have, I said, I, her, her name is Angel. My wife's name was Angel. Okay. Um, so, um, it's no, so, so once I told her the dream, I said, you know what, Angel? I used to call her Angel. Um, I said, you know what? I am going to church and I'm going to give my life to the Lord. And uh, she was like, you know what? I'm going to do the same thing. I'm just going to just do it because she loved me very much. She loved me. Uh -huh. and, um, she, and she was born and raised in the church too, though. She was uh -huh. born and raised in the church too. So, so she knew um, about salvation and things of that nature too. Right. So, yes. Yeah, so that day, um, but we went to different churches though in our upbringing, oh, okay. obviously. Okay. But it was in the same denomination. Oh, it was. Okay. But, but in a different city. She lived in a different city than, um, you know, you know, than, than where I was up front from. And I did, uh, I talked to, I told, um, I talked to my friend, God gave me eyes to see who left 24 years of remarriage adultery. And um, I talked to her regularly and she said that she was also in that same denomination. Um, wow. So I was like surprised because I had never really heard of it down here. But um, yeah, she was in it too. And it, yeah, <laughs> there was a lot of uh, divorce and remarriage going on in that yeah. denomination so yeah so anyway you yeah. said so then so you gave your life did you have like um i mean was it just did anything like did you oh feel like goodness, a regeneration my oh my goodness my life i mean because i was really terrified of that hell dream uh -huh. and it scared everything out of me everything so so when that pastor said um did anybody want to be saved uh, me and my wife was the first ones up there and I 100% surrendered everything over to the Lord. I was crying and everything. Mm -hmm. and But I really repented, though. I really repent. Because repent means to turn around and go in the opposite direction. Right. Not to continue doing the same things over and over. And I really, really repented of it, of all of my sins. And I trusted Jesus Christ as my Savior. And my whole mindset was just changed. I mean, it was just like 100% focused on God, just... You know, the, you know, the sin that used to control me, God, I, I felt that just like, feel like I've been born all over again. I mm -hmm. felt they knew me. You know how in the book of Corinthians where it said, if any man is in Christ, he is a new creature. Right. All things passed away. I really felt the weight of those sins that I did lifted from me because I, I really, really believed it in Jesus Christ. It really you is know? a weight, isn't it? It's amazing. You feel light all of a sudden. Yeah. It's yeah. complete. It, it really... You, you know, I don't know if you've ever seen the movie um, or the read the book about Pilgrim's Progress, but he was carrying around his baggage of his his uh, big weight of sin. But that is it. It really is like it. You just feel like oh, it's like you almost. I mean, I really felt like I breathe. I like breathed in the Holy Spirit. It was yeah. like oh, oh, yeah. I feel so good. Yeah, I feel so yeah. good. So, so, so speaking of the Holy Spirit, so. So, so we had altar call and stuff like that where we, everybody, we start, if you can go back to the book of Acts when they were in the upper room and they was seeking for the, you know, when they was all praying and the Holy Ghost fell on them. Mm -hmm. So we, so, so we did that. So basically we was in the church and all of the believers were just calling upon God, calling upon Jesus and the Holy Ghost just fell on a lot of everybody started speaking and, and, you know, and, you know, in an unknown tongue like they did in the Bible. Uh huh. Yeah, it was just amazing. The outpouring of the Holy Spirit, it was just so, so amazing. Sister Terry, it was just an amazing experience. And to be able to experience Jesus, and I hope everybody's listening to this, um, to be able to experience Jesus, to have that radical change, because when you experience Jesus in your life, according to the Bible, not according to your denomination or what they think, but according to the scriptures, the change that you will feel, the change that you will see, and the change that you will be able to live. Oh my goodness. I mean, like like you said, Sister Terry, the weight of those sins that used to 
handcuff you and keep you bound, you are free in Jesus. Amen. And that's what I felt. And then just to have that Holy Spirit, you know, because Christ said, I will not leave you comfortless, but I will send you the comforter. And just having the Holy Spirit being able to lead you and guide you in this sinful and dark world, it is amazing because the things that should keep us down and defeat us, we have victory. Like you said, we are overcomers. And I thank God for just saving me and my wife. Um, um, that day, and I do not believe in one save, always save. You know, I do right. not believe in that. I believe that if a person can backslide and they can go back into the world, you know, because that's biblical proof of that. Amen. And uh, it's true. I mean, it's people, like if I'll... we, you know, if 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 really it was just okay. Once we got saved, we mm-hmm. would then he would take us to heaven on that day, right? Because because you know. We wouldn't be having to be, you know, if we were just, oh, we've gotten saved. Now we would go to heaven because we know that once we truly get saved, then what is going to happen is we're going to have attack, attack. You know, the devil is going to be after us. He's already got the world, but he's going to be after us trying to lead us into temptation and all of that. So that's the reason why, you know, eventually some people, and you know, that parable of the soils, I always think about that because... Three quarters of those soils of those people who, you know, had some kind of um, spiritual experience, they heard the gospel or, you know, Mm -hmm. but they do not persevere. They are not overcomers. They um, end up, you know, being tempted by the devil. And you, you have the free will still to choose. Yes. Amen. You know, so... Amen. I mean, one of the analogies I love to use when in terms of free will is the refrigerator analogy. And what the refrigerator analogy is, is this. Everybody in their homes pretty much has a refrigerator, right? Yeah. I mean, everybody has a refrigerator. Yeah. When you go, when you open up their refrigerator and you go into their refrigerator, you're not forced to drink the milk you have in there, the water bottles you have in there, or the Kool-Aid that you have in there. You can just immediately go for the milk. It's a choice that you make. You're right. not forced to do anything, right? So that's the same thing with God. God ain't going to force you to save him. I mean, to serve him. So God ain't going to save you and be like, okay, you, 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 no matter what you do, you serve, you're serving me no matter what. No, he gives you free will. Just like, for example, I'm a person that cannot stand mashed potatoes. I don't <laughs> like it. If you, put that in, if you put that in front of me, I will resist it. I won't like it. But if you give me some fried chicken, I guarantee you I'll eat it. <laughs> I will eat it, you know, so that it all comes down with choice. So, you know, and one of my favorite scriptures, uh, you know, you know, just, you know, you know, that's refuting once they've always say it's in um, first Timothy, the fourth chapter and the first verse. And when Paul says the spirit expressly speak is that in the last days, some shall depart from the faith. Now, understand this. In order to depart from something, you have to first be in something. Like, for example, in order for me to depart from New York, I have to first be in New York in order to depart from it. I can't depart from something that I have not been a part of. So in order for me to depart from the faith, I have to have experienced the faith, believed in the faith, and trust in the faith of Jesus Christ. So if I depart from it, that means I turn my back on it and went in the opposite direction. And also the same thing with it in the book of Peter when he says, um, the dog that returns to the vomit. That's right. You see that? So if the dog returns to the vomit, you mean that person is returning back to their old life of sin. And if you die and if you don't repent, because you can't repent, you know, if a person backslide, they can't repent, but right. Satan will eat you up with guilt to try to have you not repent. But you can't repent and get your life back to God, but we have to live holy lives. As well, if, you know, Christ. I think about the, I'm not sure what chapter it's in First Peter, but it also about the dog returning of his vomit. That That yeah. is in uh, Second Peter chapter Second 2, Peter. Yep. which that whole, I, I, when I first got saved, I printed up that whole chapter and put it on the pantry door because I was surrounded by false teaching pastors and false, you know, that whole chapter is about false teachers. Uh, and then also there's a, somewhere, I think it might be in First Peter, where it says that if the righteous are barely saved, yeah. what will happen to godless sinners? You know, when we, when we truly are born again, we are we have been made saints we have been we have been given the power of the holy spirit to live a godly life 
and as saints, not to be like what so many of these Christians and these churches and all, oh, we're just a hospital for the sinners. We're all sinners. We're all sinners. No, that's not being an overcomer. That's not being victorious by the blood of Jesus. And, you know, they're just all, um, I call them counterfeit Christians or false conversions because that's what I was. I was a false conversion. You know, it's, it's, it is like um, Hell's Best Kept Secret, which is... Um, it's a it's a video that uh, Ray Comfort did, but um, anyway, so <laughs> here we go off. But it is an amazing thing that he saves any of us. Really, is what it boils down to. And it's not self righteousness. It's, it's that not. it's not self righteousness. It's that we know that we know that we know that we know Jesus, and we are not going to hear those dreaded words. You know, uh, but you said, Lord, Lord. And he says, go away, I never knew you, you who continued in lawlessness. Those are the absolute, you know, that's just the most terrible, terrible thing to hear. And thinking about how many people are going to hear it, you know, it's just, it's it's sad. It's terribly yeah. sad. Yeah. Uh, one of the things that you just said was uh, a, lot, a lot of denominations and a lot of people I didn't listen to on YouTube and I... I turn it off immediately because a lot of stuff on YouTube can be poison um, and to your soul. I mean, we have to look after our soul because our soul, we got to give it account for God. But a lot of ministers and teachers, they say that we still live in sin. And they say that we still commit sin, these sins that God forbid every day. And I stand against that. I don't I believe see. that I have to be in a fornicator. I don't believe I have to be an envy, a person or a doucher or a backbiter, everything that God condemns. I don't have to do those things every day because... Mm -hmm. And again, it's not by my strength, it's by the Holy Spirit and God's righteousness that flows through me, because it's Christ that lives through us. When we submit to God, when we submit to His Son, Jesus Christ, because I do believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, because He is the Son of God. Mm -hmm. He sits on the right hand of God. A lot of people that say that Jesus is the Father, but anyway. Yeah, that's oh my, topic. oh, I've done videos about Oneness Pentecostals. <laughs> Oneness Pentecostals, it's, it's the fastest growing denomination in America, and it's horrendous, but... Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's just a lot of stuff we just got to be careful um, about. But I believe that, you know, we are the righteousness of God. Mm -hmm. You know, can we go back into saying yes? But are we living in sin when we are following God? No. No. Christ himself said, He that committed sin is a servant of sin. I believe that's in St. John chapter 8, verse 34. He that committed sin is a servant of sin. And even make it worse, if you go to the book of First John 3, I believe it's chapter, I mean, verse 10, he said, he that committed, the John said, he that committed a sin is of the devil. Yeah. So, so if I'm out there willfully committing transgressions against God, then I'm not right, and I need to repent. And that don't mean that me or you, Terry, being judgmental, it's just, you know what? The truth hurts sometimes. It and does. I'd rather be hurt by the truth now and get my life together than to stand before God in my sins and get judged and be eternally condemned. Yeah, I, I had to pull, I had to change pictures because we started out with a picture called Overcomers. And as we're talking, I pulled up a picture. It says, To warn someone of eternal consequences is not judging them, it's loving them. It is. So while you talk about, and it's showing hellfire, and it's showing someone falling into hellfire in a white dress, so probably she thought she was a Christian, but that's what we've got to do. That's what our purpose is to, if we truly have found the living waters that set us free from our sins and, and does give us eternal life, that's what we're supposed to be doing is to telling, telling others how to get that, how to get that. And you know, that's why uh, the once saved, always saved thing isn't true, too, because those people that think they're saved, they never they never testify as to anything that happened to them. They don't go around um, evangelizing. I know you, you evangelize. I evangelize. We all that's what we do. You know, it's like we want to we want to that's how we want to serve our Lord. But, you know, they're just oh happy, happy that they go to church on Sunday and then, you know. They think they're good to go. Yeah, and I, and I remember speaking to a, a young man before, and I, you know, they all, everybody talk about, oh, I go to church, I go to church. You know what? Going to church don't make you saved. No. Mm -mm. Have you accept? Have you see? I, and I, I and I use that word accepted very very carefully. Have you accepted 
re- and repented and believed in the gospel because a lot of churches don't teach repentance in today's time. No. They don't teach repentance. They don't. They just say, read this little pamphlet thing right here and you're good to go. That's right. But, but when you come to God, you have to turn. You have to turn, Terry. You mm-hmm. cannot continue doing the same thing. God didn't see what when Jesus Christ came and when Jesus Christ came to this to this earth, he did not come to establish a family, to have a good time, and then to leave. He came for the sole purpose. His hundred percent sole purpose was to die for our sins. Mm-hmm. And to reconcile us back to God, to reconcile us back to God through Jesus Christ, we have access to the Father. Jesus Christ came to die for our sins, to get our life right. That's what He came for. So we have to really believe in the Bible. That's why Jesus said, "If you believe on Me, as the Scriptures has said," He didn't say what your church say. He didn't say what your denomination say. He didn't say what my pastor said. A lot of people say what my pastor said. No, what did the Bible say? Jesus said, if you believe in me as the scriptures have said, out of your belly shall flow the life of the Holy Spirit or the rivers of living water. It's going to flow out. So we got to believe on God as the scripture because it is the scriptures that's going to save us, which is empowered by the blood of Jesus. That's what's going to save us. I just want people to be saved. If you are listening to this right now, just please, please. Um, like I heard Sister Terry said on the last video, if your pastors is not teaching this stuff, run away. Run away. If they teach you you can live in sexual immorality or whatever saying that it may be, homosexuality or whatever it may be, and they saying that it's okay, you need to run away. So what if your family go there? So what if they go there and you're going to get mocked or talked about? Your soul is more important than anything on this earth because we all have to give account to God. And I plead with you right now, those that are listening to this, I plead with you right now, please turn to God. If you have backslidden and have went back on God and went back into the world, the air that you're breathing right now, that is God saying, I am giving you a chance to get your life together right now. Please call out to God. He said, my people which are called by my name, if they will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, he said, then I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sins. He was ready to forgive you of your sins. You just have to believe and trust in him. They just got to believe, Terry. They believe do. in Jesus Christ. They do. They, it, I mean, that was like the first thing, too, is the Holy Spirit told me, you're going to read your Bible every day. Yeah. And it is, that's the reason why people perish is because they don't read the Bible every day. It is like our food. You know, yes. uh, when when I got when I got baptized, my husband left me right, right before I was getting baptized. And um, the next week was Thanksgiving, and I went to my... Um, parents house and my mother was yelling at me that they didn't like me anymore because all I talked about was Jesus and that she actually said Terry you've got to stop reading the Bible it's made you a crazy Christian I'm like mom I was suicidal for nine months I am and the Holy Spirit told me to read the Bible every day I'm not just because you tell me not to read the Bible you know, I'm not, I'm going to be reading it every day. That's just the way it is. And and I do read it every day. And, you know, the more you read it, it, it starts to come out of your mouth, right? And, of course, a baby believer is not going to have the same retention as, you know, years and years. But it is time. Be, I, like today, I was, um, there was a channel that he was asking about whether there is marriage in heaven. And, you know, he gets thousands, gets thousands of views when he is completely confused where the Jesus says there is no yeah. marriage in heaven, no marriage yeah. in heaven will be like angels. Yeah. And, but then, you know, all these people. And of course, as I'm working the comments, as I'm going through, then there's this lady, Oh, you know, I was, I was divorced and I stayed single for a very long time. But then, um, you know, I prayed and I fasted and then I was able to get remarried. Well, there's the problem, right? You prayed, you fasted, but you didn't study the word. And then she says, oh, everybody needs to go and watch this, um, I can't remember his name, Middleton somebody. Uh, Watch him. He did a whole series on divorce and remarriage, and it was great. 
So here she is on a rapture watching channel expecting that she's going in the rapture, but she is divorced or married. So I, you know, and I didn't, uh, that was the thing I didn't understand. I, I cut you off, but, um, like, I don't know how you came to this understanding of divorce or marriage. So I'd, I'd like, we're, we're 30 minutes in, you know, we can, isn't it going to be great when we actually do get to heaven and we're going to be able to talk and talk and talk. <laughs> Yeah, anyway. so, so so with that divorce and remarriage thing, you know, I, like, again, you know, I was hundred hundred percent faithful to my wife, so I never stepped out on her or anything. So I was, but well, as a as a young minister coming up in the church, you know, in the denomination that we was in, you know, so one of the things that they taught was, um, you know, if a husband cheats on his wife or if a wife cheats on her husband, they can go and divorce and go and get remarriage because they use that that clause, that exception clause that Jesus said and accept the beef for fornication and stuff. So they took that as being, oh, so if she cheats on me while I'm married, you know, I can mess around and go and divorce her and um, and get remarried. And as a young minister, I was indoctrinated in that. So that was some of the things that I was teaching, you you know, for a long time. Now, I never married anybody as things like that. I never married anybody, you know, stuff like that. But just me teaching that. So I have to ask God to forgive me because I'm like, this is something's not right, God. Something is not right. So I stopped talking about it for a long time, a lot of years, because I really didn't really fully under, under you know, really, really to fully understand that God. And I'm not a guy that claims to know everything. If I don't know something, you know, I want to go to God about it, you know? So, so, you know, I sw- so one day I stumbled upon your channel. You know, I was incognito. You know how people just look at people's channels but don't really subscribe until later on down the road. Uh-huh. So yeah, so yeah, so I found your channel like um, <laughs> a couple years ago, <laughs> and I started um, you know, looking at some stuff. Like man, you know that stuff is kind of right right there. So I started searching the scriptures. You know, because I had a feeling always was to death do you part because when you go to the Bible, it says that. I mean, Paul says that I believe in Romans seven and one. And I'm like, God, your word. I said, God, this is Curtis. It is like breaking at my soul. The spirit was like, you're learning truth right now. Because I was like, I was teaching, like, if you cheat, you could go. You, you, could be, you, know, you, you know, you can divorce and, and you remarry and stuff like that. And I, and I had to apologize to God. I said, God, I am sorry. I really didn't know. I was teaching in ignorance. Teaching in ignorance, you know. Uh, so so you, I ask God to forgive me for that. So you were te- you were preaching at a, you were preaching in this denomination and in my teaching. Early years, yeah, yeah. How I many years? That. How many years? I, and so in my early years, so so, oh, so God called me into the ministry, um, like late to the year two thousand, like in late two thousand. And um, you know, I started studying the God's word and stuff like that. You know, and I was indoctrinated in what they were talking about when it came to divorce and remarriage. I mean, because because that denomination, Church of God in Christ, they believe Jesus Christ is the Son of God, right? They believe in holiness living and stuff like that. They believe in all that stuff. You know, being baptized. You know, they believe in all that stuff. But when it came to that, you know, that divorce and remarriage thing, that was a lot of that was a lot of that was going on in that church, in the church and stuff. You know, but I'm a young believer thinking that, hey, it was supposed to be that way, but, you know, I'm like, man, it's something that's not right. We take those wedding vows up there, you know, it's to death do us part, you know, when God put together, let nobody put us under and stuff like that, and I'm like, something is off here, man. I mean, something is really, really off here. So I started, you know, studying and started, I seen some videos on your channel, because I, I stopped talking about it for a long time, a long time. I really vaguely commented on it because I really didn't had a full understanding of it, so I started looking at your, you know, your, you, you, you know, your channel, and then you recommended some books. I look at some books and comparing scripture with scripture. And I'm like, oh my goodness! Like the book that I love, that I got. Let me see. Let me get this thing. It's, it's a fantastic book by you recommended by Joseph Webb, The Voice mm-hmm. of Marriage. Oh my goodness! Wow, amazing book, and it ain't his what he's thinking. He had a lot of scriptures, everything in the Bible. That talks about that it really is it a hundred percent emphatically really is to death do you part now if you do separate according to the bible you got to remain single or become reconciled you cannot separate and then go and get remarried because that is continuous adultery i know that a hundred percent now and i will continue to stand up on that until i leave this earth because 
we have to follow God's word. I know this is an emotional topic for a lot of people. I know that it is, and, and we are not being mean or judgmental, but the word of God, is, it, it says what it says. And if we are claiming to believe, be believers in God, we have to follow it. So, yeah, marriage and divorce, remarriage. I mean, the only way a person is free is if their spouse dies, then they're free to remarry. But if your living spouse is still alive and you married to somebody else, that is ongoing adultery. And God does not recognize that marriage. He's making, he's holding you to your first covenant spouse. Well, and to um, the command is funny because it's not funny, but coincidentally, today is July 10th. And in um, the verse that says you must remain single or if a woman departs, she's to remain single or else be reconciled. Mm -hmm. And a husband is not to divorce his wife. There is no exception in there. The husband is not to divorce his wife. And if the woman does leave, you know, presumably because she's being beaten, like actually fearing of her, of being killed, uh, she still must remain single or else be reconciled. Well, that is 1 Corinthians 7, 10, and 11. And today is 7, 10, and 11. So, you know, wow. I'm always like, Lord, could you come today? Could you come today? Could you come today? And, you know, I use, because the thing too is, there are a lot of people that they don't want to pay attention to the Gospels. They say, oh, you know, uh, the Gospel according to Paul. Well, Paul that actually, uh, 1 Corinthians 7, 10 and 11 is a command. He says, not I, but from the Lord. Yes. So that really almost could be put into red letters because he is saying the command from the Lord Jesus is yeah. is this. And uh, I, I did change the picture. The picture now is it's not the will of God. If it's not the will of God, it's not, excuse me, it's not the will of God if it goes against the word of of God. Yeah. And that, you know, just that, just those two verses, um, you know, here this is in the book of first Corinthians and, and it's in this chapter about marriage and it, they try, they just wiggle around and then they, you know, they start to go, well, 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 what about this? And what about that? And, you know, particularly like they'll say, well, you know, my marriage, uh, my marriage didn't last for very long. It was a mistake or, or, you know, I get a new marriage once I've been born again. That's a big one. That's a big one. Yeah. They go, oh, you know, I I got saved. And so now I can, now God wants me to be happy with a new marriage. When 1 Corinthians 7 goes on to say, if you're married to an unbeliever, you know, say, you're, say your wife did not get saved at the same time. Mm -hmm. You know, you would have stayed, it's not like you're going to leave her and go no. find another wife, you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Mm -mm. You would have stuck with her. You would have been praying for her. You would have been leading her as, you know, and loving her as Christ loves the church. Yep. And um, statistically, if a man gets saved before his wife, it's a pretty high percentage that get the wife gets saved. Statistically, if the woman gets saved first, it's a very low percentage that the husband will. Wow. I think that, I mean, I've seen women that, I mean, that's what happened to me, basically. Um, but I've seen women who, um, the reason why that happens is their husbands, it's almost like a a jealousy kind of thing. That Well, first of all, they don't like being told, hey, you really sh you know, you shouldn't be doing this and you shouldn't be doing that. But even if a wife is able to keep her mouth kind of quiet, um, there's a resentment of the husband. It's almost like they blame Jesus for taking and changing their wife from who they married. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. That's a serious topic. Um, that is just, it's just running rampant. That's one of the things that's running rampant, not only in the, in the unbeliever circles, but also in the churches. I mean, it's a lot of that going on. You got people that got, that's in their second and third marriages and all of the spouses are currently still living. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's a problem right there. And that's ongoing adultery. And that is according to the Bible, one of the sins that will keep you out of the kingdom and will put you in the lake of fire. Again, that ain't me being trying to scare people. That's not me being judgmental. That's what the Bible says. I'm just an ambassador of Jesus Christ sharing his word. And again, the truth hurts, but you know what? Just let the hurt hurt 
and just repent and just because it, I mean no sin is worth going to hell over. I mean hell is forever is a long time. It's yeah. a long time. I mean, have you ever burnt yourself on the stove when you're trying to cook? That's hot. Yeah. You're like oh, but the pain goes away really quickly. Imagine eternity in that fire. I mean, you gotta we gotta think about these things because. We're going to get judged one day by God. And if your name is not found in the Lamb's Book of Life, we're gone. I mean, so adultery, divorce and remarriage is a serious thing. And I really believe that those, if, you, if anybody is in that, it's really time for you to reevaluate your life and see what really matters. What really matters. Temporary pleasure. What really matters. What should a prophet of man shall gain the whole world and lose his soul? What does it profit? Please, just, just come out of it. If you're in it right now listening to this, just please, please. So what if people talk bad about you? So what if they say, oh, why are you doing this? Don't listen to people. Look, your, your soul is more important than the chatter that's going on behind your back. Your soul to God is important. If you are in divorce or remarriage, if you are a homosexual, if you are a fornicator, if you are a person that you know that drinks and get drunk and things like that, if you are a person that clubs and go to parties and you shake what your mama gave you and whatever it may be, just come out of it because the rapture is going to be one day. Every day I'm hoping that the rapture takes place every day. Sister Terry, let me tell you, when I am driving in my car, when it's a cloudy day outside, I am always looking at the clouds, hoping that I hear the trumpets and be able to appear before Jesus. Because Paul said we shall be changed in the moment, in the twinkling of an eye. And he also says in Thessalonians, we shall meet them in the clouds, literal clouds. So I don't know about you. Well, I do know about you, but I know you're you, you around your watcher too. <laughs> yeah, but you know, it is interesting that... Um... Every once, like on my video that I did on Friday, there were there there were two people in the comments that I personally, I mean, I know, uh, well, one of them I know from her channel name uh, that she's very very strong on divorce and remarriage, but she does not believe in the pre-tribulation rapture. And there was someone else who um, was giving, I mean, I, I don't, I did not know her channel before, but um, she was giving advice to. There was a, a person named Susan D. who was saying that she's in a divorce and remarriage with children, so there's just no way she can get out of it. And um, there were several of us trying to tell Susan, you know, yes, you can, you know. And, and this other person was trying to help her, but this person also does not believe in the rapture. And, um, you know, that's the thing. It's like, you know, how you put off what you promised to do to God yeah. And God gave you mercy. But now, now if someone, I mean, if you don't believe in the pre-tribulation rapture, then you could say, well, I'm going to put it off. I'm going to put yeah. it off. And um, that's the reason why I, I pulled up another picture. This is Matthew 24, 42. Watch, therefore, you don't know what hour your Lord is coming. That's the reason why the time to repent is now. No. And that's yeah. the reason why the rapture is pre-tribulation because you don't know what hour he is coming. And the people that are post-trib rapture believers, and there are as many post, from what I understand, as many post-trib rapture believers as pre-trib. And then also that guy that I told you about that um, that woman had said she had watched his whole sermon series on divorce and remarriage, and so that's why she could get remarried. I just went to his channel and I saw one video. Um, he's got a he's been teaching and teaching and teaching. He's got tons and tons of videos, and I went just looking, looking, looking. Where's a rapture one? And then I I found one, and he says that the in Daniel seventieth week that. Um, Jesus fulfilled the first three and a half years of the tribulation by no. his walk while he was here on earth from his ministry. And wow. that once the rapture happens, that's at the midpoint and there's only three and a half years. So this is somebody who is claiming, you know, tons and tons of videos about teaching. Then he's uh, about everything, you know, everything. He's teaching the Bible and he's teaching wrong about the rapture because he says... Um, 
that the Daniel 70th week is half fulfilled back 2,000 years ago and half fulfilled in the future, which is completely ridiculous. And he also yeah. tells people that they can get divorced, remarried. You know. Yeah. And I'm yeah. sure, I'm sure, like if you know, when it hit you that you had been teaching this, and then you're quiet. Yeah. And that's part of the reason why you wanted to do why you wanted to do a video because you want to tell people, hey, I was teaching wrong. I was. I had to humble myself though, because a lot of people they don't want to humble themselves. They I had to humble myself like this is this can't be right, you know? Because now I'm seeing all these scriptures and this. I'm like, I've been teaching wrong. I said no. I so I, I stayed quiet on that topic. I didn't really teach on it no more. I left it alone. The only adultery form that I taught was if a man cheats on his wife or if his wife, you know, you know, you know, you know, cheats on her husband, because that's adultery. That's the only form of it that I taught over there. But as far as like divorce and remarriage, I stayed away from it because I didn't really, I didn't know it. And I had to let God teach me. I had to let me humble myself, right? Mm -hmm. Instead of believing in the indoctrinated stuff that I was indoctrinated in, I had to humble myself. I'm like, you know what, I, I, I got to listen to God's word and I'm choose to follow God's word. And, and, and that's what I'm doing right now. I'm just, I'm just following, um, um God's word uh, right now. Um, you know, I church out of my home. I don't really have a church organization, affiliation and stuff that I go with. Um, but I know God is in the process of trying to help, 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 help get me a building and I can be able to, um, establish a, a faith warriors of God ministries building. No, you don't. Work. No, you don't. Uh, I'm going to say absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I have to say it because this is one of the things that gets me really mad. Honestly, it gets me really mad because um, there are, that's what a lot of people are doing. They're all trying to build their ministries. At the same time, they're talking about, you know, the rapture's imminent, the rapture's imminent. But then they're trying to build their YouTube channels. Oh, here's my PayPal or some yeah. of these, some of these um, prophecy watching um, churches like, you know, Rock Harbor Church, Bakersfield, and stuff. They've got it in their statement of faith that marriage is between one man and one woman. But are they going to do sermons about it? No, they're not. And then here they've got all these videos talking about, um, you know, the rapture and all the alien uh, alien sign. You know, all they do they do these prophecy updates and all of that. But do they? They don't talk about this because it. It, they won't be getting all the views and they won't be getting all the money. And at the same time, here at Rock Harbor Church, for instance, they are raising money on a, a they're doing a, a, what what they would call, you can be a member, an online member, and then you can be donating to them to build their building. Wow. Now, wow. just for instance, there was a, the last church that I was in, I was there for a year. It was um, Johnson Ferry Baptist Church, and the man had been president of the, of the Southern Baptist Convention uh, years before. I'm there, and I go up to him after a service, and I said, I need to talk to you about divorce and remarriage. Wow. And he's like, okay. And and I said, well, um, you know, I he said, he, the first question was, has your husband remarried? Yes. Well, then you're free to marry. The innocent woman is free to marry. And I was like, no, Bryant, right. That is not what the Bible says. And here you were president of the Southern Baptist Convention and you don't know this, you know? And there was another time where if they had an open mic uh, time and I got up to give a testimony about Isaiah uh, 43, one through five, I think it is. Though you walk, you know, though you go through rivers of difficulty, you will not drown. Though you go through the fire, you will not be burned. And I, I love you. I mean, well, I couldn't believe that in the Bible, God actually said, I love you, Terry. You know, I know. <laughs> you know? I was like, whoa, whoa, you know, I mean, I was like, wow. But I got up and, you know, everybody was taking their Bibles to be giving a testimony, open mic thing. When I finished, and other people did too, other people gave their testimony of like, you know, a particular passage that was meaningful to them. And I'm in that testimony, I was saying, you know, my husband left me and I'm having to stay single. And, um, you know, it's not what I would have chosen, but you know, that God is with me and I, I've made it through. I, have, I haven't been burned, I haven't been drowned. You know, he, he loves me. And yeah. after the service, the only people that came up to me was the singles group. 
wanting me to join the singles group. And I said, oh, so y'all are not in the singles group. Y'all are all singles. Nobody is divorced. You're not. Oh, no, no. Our singles group is to help divorced people find oh. new spouses. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah. And, you know, there are a lot of singles groups that are like that. Divorce care is a... Um, Divorce care is a program that is sold to all these different churches that has uh, videos in it. And that also is to help divorce people once they get over their, you know, the troubles of their divorce and everything to find another divorced person to marry. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's going fire on the fire. It's, it's bad. And yeah. the thing is, you know, we are in the birth pains and it's not going to be if anything, you know, hardly anybody likes to listen to truth anymore, right? So, you know, I don't even know when we when I do a video, I, the way YouTube is, you know, I used to get thousands of views and then it just mm -hmm. keeps going down and down and down because, um, you know, we're being persecuted, really. And then and then you got all the people who are like, yeah, yeah, y'all been talking about the rapture for years. Well, okay, but eventually it will happen. And the birth pains... You know, I mean, if, you, if you're if you a father of seven children, you happen to uh, know a little bit about this, don't you? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know, it's not yeah. like, okay, we've been in birth pains, and I say since 2017. I mean, uh, March 16th of 2017 was when I had my first rapture dream, and God told me to start this channel. But, you know, with the uh, Revelation 12 sign that was September 23rd of 2017, we had the Great American Solar Eclipse. Uh, you know, it's like the birth pains get have been getting closer and closer and closer together. And, um, you know, it's not eventually it's got to happen. It's not like, oh, we're going to take a, a break from our yeah. labor pains. Right. Yeah. 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 It's like it's like, for example, not for example, but so, you know, the rapture is it can be imminent. And, and the word imminent means about to happen. Mm -hmm. It can happen like any moment. I mean, it can happen in the next 30 minutes, which I will love. Yeah. I would love it if it would do that. I really want to see Jesus face to face. You know, I, you know, I have, I have so, just to get off topic real quick, in terms of meeting Jesus, I have like really, really strong conversations with God when I'm talking to him. Because, I mean, I wonder how tall he is. I think about those things like that. I mean, people are like, oh, he's, this is a weirdo on this phone. What is this guy talking about? I mean, I mean, we made in God's image, right? I mean, right. so think about it. I wonder how his facial hairs look. You know, I wonder, you know, I wonder how long his hair is and those things like that. I mean, I've had I dreams to, of seeing him. <laughs> I, I, right? I just want to just see him. No, I, I have. To, I mean, I, I mean, have had dreams of seeing him. I have uh, not seen God the Father, but I have definitely, I've had like three or four dreams of seeing Jesus. I mean, I seen Jesus like in some of the rapture dreams, but he was at a distance though. His arms are spread out wide in the air. Oh he was at a no, distance. I haven't. About, yeah, I haven't yeah. had that. It's been. I had a dinner with him in a closet. Oh, uh, oh, wow. I had. Um, I had a, a dream. The first dream I had, I saw Jesus. We were in an old-fashioned sailboat, and he was standing on the boom and holding on to the mast. And he's standing, I'm seeing the back of him, he's got his white robe, he's got brown hair, you know, at his shoulders, and we're zooming through the water based wow. on the power of Jesus. There's no sail. There's no sail. He, we are flying through the water. I'm just having the greatest time <laughs> Jesus is taking us. Um, but yeah, I mean, I have, there are people who, I mean, I've had, I, I think I've had, I, I had a dream one time where I was walking through all the, with all these people, Back, like you would say, it was like in Bible times, right? And we're just yeah. all walking around. And then, and he he sort of like leaves the crowd and comes over right, standing right in front of me. And really? I just said, yes. And I said, I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord. And he Can you just, describe him a little bit? I mean, because I only see him from like the distance. He like, just smiled. Like, he know. just smiled. And, you know, really, I would say he looks like... um you know, he looks like in the mo uh, in that picture that that uh, painter. Um, oh my goodness! It was a, it's a woman who was a, a young woman who did a painting of Jesus. Uh, I can't remember what her name is. I think she's from Poland or Russia or something like that. I can't remember what her name is, but basically, or like you would see him in these Jesus movies. These Jesus movies. It's like you know, 
he that's what he looked like now i know some people have seen him in his glorified state you know with his face glowing and stuff like that i haven't it's like whenever i'm with him like he's taken me to heaven i've i've had you know i have had wedding dreams and stuff but it's like he's there with me i don't remember like seeing him you know he like like one time um we had the wedding and then or we had a wedding and like i would be getting my i had had i've had different wedding dress dreams different ones where i'm putting on different <laughs> shoes where i'm dancing you know there was one where all of the brides were all getting their dresses on and then we went and played musical chairs while he watched and he was laughing and thinking it was so fun because we were like little children playing musical chairs i used to love playing musical chairs yeah that was a good one you i know? remember that one too but here all the brides all the brides are playing musical chairs and then the next thing i know um he's taking me to have we're up in heaven and he's showing me this huge huge green fields and he says these are bigger than the world's biggest baseball fields. And I'm like, I thought, oh, maybe the Raptors can happen during the World Series. It would be, rec <laughs> it'd be recorded while the Raptors happening. But, you know, I mean, I've been to, he I've been to heaven several times and um, I've seen Jesus a few times, but I have not ever seen, I mean, some people have actually like seen the Father and Jesus wow. sitting on the throne and, wow. but not like their faces, just their robes or their feet or whatever. I, I personally have not had that, but, but the thing yeah. is, um, you know, that's another thing. I mean, gosh, we're, we're almost an hour, but I do, I do want you to talk about, because here you, that the, when I saw that first video that you did, the first one I ever saw, I don't know if you had done videos before that, but the first one I saw was, uh, your left behind dream. And, oh my goodness, that was so powerful. And, uh, when was that that you had that dream? So uh, I would have to go back and I know, I know it was, I want to say like I, I just over a year ago um, um, when I that one. So so yeah. So I, I had another one um, after that one too, which was a little bit more encouraging. Yeah, <laughs> it was a lot more encouraging. By yeah. the way, it was a lot I more watched him, but I watched and y'all. I will be putting in his um, in the description box. I'll put his channel so you can go catch up on these things, but. Uh, I forgot what was the reason why you were left behind. Well, well, well actually, God was showing me um, um, sins and stuff that will keep you back and down. He was showing me sins that um, that can keep you down, you know. And He was showing me lust sins. He was showing me envious sins, um, um, all types of sins. And, I, and in, in that first dream, when I was getting left behind, I was running, trying to jump up to try to seek and I can I get up there? But sin was weighing me down. And immediately, you know, in my mind, you know, when I woke up in my mind, the scripture that immediately went there was the one in Hebrews where the Bible says, um, lay aside the sin that so easily besets us. Lay aside the sin. And if you think about it, sin is like a weight. It weighs you down. Mm -hmm. It weighs you down. So me trying to jump up to get with Jesus, I was getting weighed down. God was showing me these things can weigh you down. These things are weighing you down. You know, you got to let go of these things so that you can be able to go up in there. And that was the whole issue. God was showing me these things are weighing you down. Mm. Mm -hmm. You know, you know, the bitterness weighing you down. Laying, just weighing you down. Mm -hmm. Right. So those were the things that were weighing me down. And God was showing me, you have to let these things go. Did you have unforgiveness toward anybody? No, not really. It was just a little bit of, of bitterness because, it, you know, it, it, was a, it was a point in time where, you know, I stood my ground, you know, on certain things that a lot of people in my family was doing. Oh, you know, okay. I stood my ground and I didn't agree with it. And then, you know, I got kind of shunned a little bit and it hurt me. Mm -hmm. You know, so I was a little, I was a little bit bitter in that. As far, as far as like unforgiveness, no, no, because I forgive everybody. Well, okay. I mean, I just, I just forgive people. But well, as far as being shunned, in me, in, as far you know? as being shunned, you know, the thing is, uh, the most shunning you're going to get is if you go public, as you're doing right now about divorce or marriage. Yeah. You know, that is not going to be something that builds ministry, builds friends. Yeah. Um, yeah, I know. I know. You know, I don't know if you've got anybody in your family that is. Do you have anybody in your family that's divorced, remarried? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, you know, the more public you're going to be, then you know you will be shunned. And, um, you know, I, 
I use Mark uh, Matthew chapter 10 all the time because I consider that is like our chapter for, um, you know, we're disciples of Jesus. We're not, we're not just, uh, you know, your Christian, you know, basic Christian. We are true disciples. And that's like our commander, our master who is giving yeah. us instructions. And it says that the battle will be within your own family and that, you know, um, if you love anyone, you know, I mean, that's an amazing thing too. Here you are a father of seven children, but if yeah. you love your children more than you love Jesus, you're not worthy of heaven. That's what Jesus said. Yeah. That's what he's exactly what he said. And we got to listen to everything and think about what you just said about being the shun part. I mean, think about what Jesus said. He said, a servant is not greater than his Lord. If they persecuted me, they're going to persecute you. So mm -hmm. we have believers and followers of Jesus. We got to understand that we're going to get persecuted. And it may come from the place people that is right in the midst of you. And, you know, God taught me, you just got to just deal with it. And then just trust in me, son. Mm -hmm. Trust in me. Don't let bitterness creep up in your heart. You got to just trust in me and just deal with it, you know, because a moment when I felt that bitterness, the scriptures about Jesus came to my mind when he said that, mm -hmm. you know, they persecuted me. They're going to per persecute you, too. You're going to be persecuted. Just hold on and just endure. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, if they persecute you, rejoice. Yeah. Because rejoice. rejoice. Right. Because okay. we doing what doing what God told us to do. It ain't just we being mean and stuff like that. But when we say that we wear the banner of Jesus. We saying that we are wearing the banner of Jesus and everything that he stood for. And a lot of people, they're not going to agree with everything that he stood for. And then they're going to think that we are attacking them when they're not. We just actually loving on them because we want to see the best in them in God. And that's what it's about. And I just, you know, the persecution, it hurts. But you know what? Jesus went through it. And he said in his world, we're going to have tribulation. But he said, be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. So if you overcome the world and if we trust in them, we will overcome the world the world as well. And and really because we are um bold, you know, the godly are as bold as lions is what I like to say. But because we are bold, that is just proof that we are the bride of Christ, right? What yeah. what, what bride would not be um or, you know, I mean, if you, <laughs> you know, if you love your husband to be, you're going to stand up for him and you are going to defend him. And, and you, you know, in, in our case, we have the perfect bridegroom. He's the perfect, you know, husband. He's the perfect, you know, and it's a little concept that's hard when, you know, you're talking about men and women, but, yeah. you know, he's as much your bridegroom as he is my bridegroom because the church is neither male nor female, Jew or Greek. We're all one in uh -huh. slave or free we're all one in christ jesus um yeah. but you know the people the people who um the people who are on fire for the lord you know we are the wise virgins we're on fire for the lord and that they don't want to be around us because that's all we want to talk about <laughs> you know and it's really a blessing when god removes these people from your life because i call it the forgiveness workload because when really because you know we are to forgive as we've been forgiven yeah but but you know if you're constantly in um contact with people who whose god is the devil you know they're going to be hauling accusations at you they're going to be trying to get you oh come on you know just come go back to being who you used to be or you know would you stop with that jesus stuff you know and you start to think, well, maybe we do have, maybe we do have time, you know, maybe, maybe we, maybe it's not time for a year or two or three years or something, you know? And so it's a way that you start to compromise with every day. Today could be yeah. the day I'm going to die or the day of the rapture. And, yeah. and, and then you end up also having what I call the forgiveness workload because, you know, words, <laughs> words are a terrible, terrible weapon you know, words yeah, are a terrible weapon. Are. And when they, you know, what comes out of our hearts, the overflow of the heart, the mouth speaks. And so the, our hearts are filled with the Holy Spirit. So that's why we love talking about God and, and scriptures and all that. But the words that are coming out are of these unbelievers or these counterfeit Christians. You know, I mean, 
when I think about how many people told me to get remarried that are Christians, you know, it's like if I had listened to all the pressure instead of obeying God, you know, I would be in a world of world of trouble, <laughs> a world of trouble. And, um, you know, uh, they don't know that they don't know. That's the thing. It's like they've got enough of being sitting in church and hearing uh, teaching and Bible verses and singing the songs and stuff, but they don't, they don't know. Um, I don't know how to say it, but it's like, you know, my mother, my mother was a choir director and an organist and, you know, she sang in the Messiah and all of this stuff. And I know you have a lovely singing voice too, by the way. I love to sing. I love to sing. <laughs> I, write, I write my own. Um, the Spirit inspires me to write my own lyrics and stuff like yeah. that. I do. I love, yeah, I love I've got sing. that. I mean, I also consider that prophesying because you sing in tongues too, don't you? You sing I in mean, every, I mean, when I pray, I pray in tongues. As far as singing in tongues, I never experienced ever praying. Oh, praying well, you, tongues. okay, now you're going to yeah. be singing in tongues. Because, you know, mine started out with just speaking in tongues, and then I moved quickly into singing in tongues. And a lot of times I'll sing in tongues, and then the next morning he'll give me the words to write the song. And then I put them oh, wow. on a, I have a playlist of songs that the Holy Spirit had write, uh, had me write. But, um, yeah, and, you know, it's like, I love singing, singing in tongues. It just is like, it just flows. It's like, wow. And of course, that's a whole nother thing too, because, you know, you there are some churches that are really good on the doctrines of, mm -hmm. of almost everything, even including marriage. But then they're what is called cessationist. They don't believe in prophesying. They don't believe in healing and they don't believe in tongues. And so, yeah. you know, it's like, it's... <laughs> I believe in it all. I, mean, I do too. The Bible teaches miracles and healing. I'm believing in it. I Paul know. Talks about prophecy and tongues. I believe in it. I believe in whatever the Bible says. I'm going to believe in it because it's the truth. Like, it's the like truth. you said, the Bible is the truth. So if the Bible says prophesying and and um healing and miracles. I believe a person can have get, get healed today. I really believe in that. I I do too. I do too. And the thing is, that's why we believe in the Book of Revelation. Yep. And the book of Revelation does not have the church, which is defined as the true disciples of Jesus Christ. The church is not here. After not after here. Revelation 4, 1, yep. Yep. you know, we, yep. we, you know, Revelation 3, 10 and 11 says we've obeyed the command to persevere. I will keep you from the time of testing that will mm -hmm. come upon the whole earth. Yep. And that's for the people that really were not counted worthy because they weren't living holy. They weren't um, fully devoted to the Lord. And, uh -huh. and you know, you know, uh, um, that says we get taken out first and then there are going to be a whole bunch of people left behind. And then, you know, some of them will find out these were the sins that is the reason why I'm left behind. And yeah. then some of them, I'm not sure they're going to be given a second chance, you know, it's a sad thing, but, um, you know, when he says, I'm going to, um, you know, go away, I never knew you. And he I says know. that, you know, he says that, and here they were doing all this activities, right? Casting out demons and doing all that stuff. And he says, go away. I never knew you, you who continued in lawlessness. Like how, yeah. how could you, you know, how could you be teaching the Bible and teaching in error and, really why if you belong to the father right the father will convict you that yeah. you are doing something wrong and that's what he did to me about the teaching on that um divorce and remarriage too. that's why i closed my mouth on that i didn't i said i can't teach this no more i have to i have to get confirmation from god and i went to god <laughs> went to god and you know and then i finally started like man okay i have to ask god to forgive me for teaching wrongly and a lot of pastors, they don't want to do that because they think, oh, I'm the pastor, so I'm infallible. So whatever I teach is, like, oh, I went to seminary school, which seminary schools, this, they messes up a lot of, they, I don't, that's a whole different topic right there. Yeah. But um, yeah, it's just, you have to humble yourself. As a teacher, follower of God, we, you know, we have to humble ourselves, Terry, and be like, you know what? I got that one wrong. Right. You know, and then just wait for God to, tell you the truth and then you stand up on the truth and or the light that you receive 
um, from God. But really quick, piggybacking on what you just said when you were talking about how the church is not here in chapter four, and and, and, and that's really really awesome because one of the scriptures that and then that I share with people that proves that the rapture is before the tribulation is kind of what Jesus said in Revelation. I'm looking at it right now, Revelation chapter one, verse nineteen, and that is the really true way to really interpret. The book of Revelation. Jesus said, He said, He told John, Write the things which you have seen, write the things which are, and then write the things which will be hereafter, which well, which will take place after. What did Christ, I mean, what did John see? He seen the glorified Christ, right? Mm -hmm. Then write the things which thou, you know, which are, which is concerning the churches. And then he said, Write the things which are after the what? The churches. So that's why you don't see the church in the tribulation because they're not there we are not there we are gone we are gone we're gone we don't see a, a glimpse of the tribulation we're gone not even a second and, not even a second and i mean it's terrible it's <laughs> terrible how many people think oh you know it's not going to happen until the last trumpet of the seven trumpets when when the trumpet call of god is the you know, when it says the last trump in First Corinthians 15, mm -hmm. and then in First Thessalonians 4, it says that there'll be a voice of an archangel and the trumpet call of God. That is the last trump of the age of grace. Yes. Yes. You know, we're in this age of grace from the time of Pentecost until the rapture that there is grace. It's, a, yep. it's an amazing grace. It but is, you have to call amazing. on the name of the Lord to be saved, to yep. receive that grace. It's not, hey, man, um, hey, hallelujah, hallelujah. It's not the you. grace to just continue on in sin. You know, I always use uh, Jude. Um, Jude has only got one chapter. It's verse 4. It says something about the condemnation of these people. They've crept into the church. And of yeah, course, I think, right I think they've overtaken the church, honestly. Yeah. It's not just, you know, it's... The whole church is corrupt, but go ahead and read it. Yeah, so it says, and this is so true, it says, so, for, so it says, for certain men have crept in unnoticed, who long ago were marked out for this condemnation, ungodly men who turned the grace of our God into lewdness and deny the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. They're denying, <laughs> denying God. Now what, you know, elsewhere God says, Jesus says, whoever acknowledges me, I will acknowledge to my Father in heaven. Yeah. So, you know, you, in your life, you are either acknowledging God by the way you live or you are denying God by the way you live. That's true. It's, he's not, you know, he says, you know, they um, profess that they know me, but their hearts are dead men bones or something like that. I can't remember exactly, but, you know, basically... They honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. Yeah, and that's one of the things that I get a lot of backlash on is when I, because, you know, the Bible teaches holy living. And that's mm -hmm. one of the things, you know, God told me to teach about holy living. And when I teach about holy living, a lot of people say, oh, that's work salvation and things like that. But the Bible tells us to live holy lives. So if the Bible telling us to live holy lives, that's not worth like one time I was talking to a young person. It was like, you know, the Bible tells us to resist. He said, well, you resist and that's a work. I'm like, what? <laughs> How's resisting the work? How is turning your back, turning your back on sin a work? That is a, a command from God to do that. The Bible says, resist the devil and he will flee from you. The Bible tells us to stand. So mm -hmm. if I'm standing, is that a work? I mean, it's just so much so much confusion and so much poison out there and if you're listening to this right now i just advise you just go to the word of god and just whatever you have been um pre i'm gonna call it whatever it hasn't been installed in you by your denomination it is time for you to just go to the word of god for yourself and then just see what it says take out all pre thinking whatever you may be thinking about whatever you learned from way back then and just take the word of God for what it says and then follow it. And you will see that these denominations or whatever is not teaching correctly. It's, it's important, Terry, that people know the truth and we're going to be persecuted for righteousness sake. You know, we're going to be persecuted, Terry, but you know what? And whoever else is getting persecuted, 
we just got to just just deal with it and just trust in Jesus Christ. If bitterness rise up like it did with me, just acknowledge it and say, God, forgive me for that. And then just just run, just run, because it's not worth. I, I like the Bible says right here in the book of First Peter 5 and 9, you know, resist him steadfast in the faith. Resist to resist Satan, knowing that the same sufferings and experience is being experienced by those that are other Christians. You know, everybody, we all experience persecution and suffering, but together, as we pray together and, you know, fellowship with each other, we probably don't fellowship in person, but like right now, we're fellowshipping right now, we you know. We're fellowshipping right now, you know. We're two or three and gathered. Christ said, there I am in the midst. Mm -hmm. So we got Christ here with us right now, too, in spirit. So just know that we got to be strong with each other. We are all faith warriors of God. Let's just be strong together and just look daily for our Savior because one day we're going to blink our eyes and we're going to be standing right before Christ in that sky. And let me tell you, Sister Terry, that's going to be the time of our lives. And we only get finally. Hallelujah. <laughs> hallelujah. Hey, hallelujah. 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 And, and you know, the thing is, <laughs> it's our blessed hope. What hope, what hope is there about going through the tribulation? I mean, I, I don't understand. Like, are these people completely, they think, where's the joy? You know, I, um, my kids, the, the Christian school that they went to, they had these joy banners all over the place. Jesus, others, yourself. And, you know, when you think about, we have joy. Even, yes. in, even in the sufferings of being shunned or being hated or, you know, uh, being ignored or um, rejected, all of these things that go along with being on the narrow road, mm -hmm. we still have joy because, yeah. because we know what is coming and we don't have to go through it. Yeah, you know? I mean, I, I, a lot of people call us cowards, the preacher. Yeah. Uh, I, I, we, we're called cowards. But, I mean, Paul says, comfort one another with these words. And right. as far as I know, going through a tribulation, that won't be considered comfort. No. That's not comfort. That's called turmoil and anguish and, and pain. And the Bible says, I believe Paul says somewhere in Thessalonians, he said, you know, we're not going, we're not appointed to God's wrath. That's right. And God's wrath is, that's talking about the tribulation. That's when his wrath is going to be poured out upon his earth. And his church is not going to be a part of that. You know, most of the tribulation anyway is for Israel. Right. Because they rejected Christ as their Messiah. Right. And that's part of Daniel's 70 week, right? That's right. Even yeah, though, I mean, there will, be, there will be, um, in mul there will be multitudes saved of yeah. from every, you know, nation, tribe, and tongue, yeah. I think is what it says. Um yeah. Uh, but yeah, it's because we're in this age of grace and the time is the time to repent. You know, it's like, it's like the, all these people too, like, oh, what, you know, repent, they'll say repentance is a work. They actually will say that, you know, yeah. we, you know, like what repentance is not a work. Repentance is, is, I mean. And the thing, too, is they'll say, oh, you know, we just repent every day. Well, if you're repenting every day, you're not getting any victory. And, yeah. you know, and that's not what repentance is either. It's not like, I mean, it, it, you know, I think of it as the same as, um, you know, certain religions where they go and they go and confess, right? They go mm -hmm. and confess, and then they're told to say these certain prayers and all of that. That's not, that's not genuine repentance. That's not coming from your heart that you are... You hate the sins that you used to do. You know, in 1 Corinthians 6, where it says, you know, adulterers, fornicators, homosexuals, all of that. And then it's, uh, it's verse um, 9 and 10. And then verse 11 says, and such were some of you. Yeah, so yeah, like, were. you know, I was like, yes, I was. I yeah. was. But Amen. I don't continue doing yes. that. Amen. You know? Amen. It's, Key word is were. Past tense. Past tense. Yeah. And the people who are committing adultery because of divorce and marriage, that word is committeth. It's ongoing. Ongoing. It's every single time they have sex with that person who is not their covenant spouse, God is writing it down as you committed adultery against me and against your first spouse. Yeah. And, and you know, you never know. Maybe that, maybe uh, you have also, because you divorced and remarried, 
then that person was like, oh, there's no hope of, of them ever coming back. And so then they go get remarried, which then, you know, you're getting, it's going on your account that you're committing adultery yourself physically. You're also causing that, your covenant spouse to be committing adultery. And it's like, God is writing every sin you do down. You know, there's a book of sins, right? He's writing these down and he will wash them all away and never remember them. If you truly repent and and you're done and say, I have sinned, you know, the Psalm 51, which was the prayer of David, you know, a broken and contrite heart, he will not despise. And he Amen. said, he said, please do not take your Holy Spirit from me. Amen. That means you could have the Holy Spirit. And if you just continue to reject the command to live holy and you just keep on doing it, eventually mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. he will go away. Amen. He will. He will. Amen. Amen. And uh, you know it, what, Jerry, is it I pray your channel that it, that it continue, that you continue to, you know, I pray to God right now that you just continue to let God use you and to keep on just, just spreading God's word because there's not a lot of sound doctrine out there right now. It's very lacking. And everything that I've heard from your channel thus far is, is uh, people need to be saved. They need to hear the truth, you know, and I just thank God for your channel. Just, just, just simple fact is because you, you are a warrior for, for God, and um, you are a very strong woman of God. I mean, just, just hearing your story, everything that you know that you're going through and standing strong, you know, and that's amazing in itself. I mean, you, I mean, your life is a testimony that people need to hear, and I pray that God continue to bless your channel to to bring people to Him because people need the true salvation, not this phony candy cane stuff that's out there. We need the true stuff. And your channel is bringing forth the true stuff. So I thank God for you. Well, thank you. And, you know, one more thing. You can have your name erased from the book of life. That's in yep. that's in Revelation. Um, yep. So, yeah, we've been going for an hour and 21 minutes. That's kind of funny because when I had the dream with Jesus uh, in the closet, I we were eating. It was like this elegant dinner. It was in a closet. and wow. um, And we were eating gold pearls like pearls like in a I would take spoonfuls of pearls that were made of gold and a gold flower and then at the end of the dinner the waitress came into the closet and it was like we were in a busy restaurant there was all these I could hear the noise of all the people but here Jesus and I were having this intimate dinner and when the waitress came in I said oh I think I'd like a piece of pie and she said it's 1 21 in the morning and I woke up and I thought, well, that's really weird. But a piece of pie, you know, I've got to think about numbers. And pie is the never-ending number. And then, bye-bye, Miss American Pie. Remember that song? Uh-huh. And America is under judgment. And it, it's for a lot of things. But the basis is they didn't honor marriage. And it's been that way for quite a long time. And you had Hollywood and everything, all these influences where everybody, everybody's divorced, remarried, which then leads to, you know, homosexuality. It yeah. leads to people going to prison because they didn't have a, a dad. You know, there's, um, you know, the black community doesn't even, I mean, I think it's something like 70 or 80% of black children are born out of wedlock. You know, people don't even uh -huh. get married anymore. And here yeah. we are sounding so old fashioned, but um, God doesn't change. He doesn't change. Doesn't change. He does not. And he, it's his law or his commands are, which we are to be making disciples, teaching them to obey the commands of Christ. They're for our good. They you know, are. If you would live that way, you don't get diseases and you don't get all these things that can, you know. It, it's for her good. It's, it is. You know, and so anyway, um, yeah, you can be erased and it's a perseverant. If you're persevering in the faith, that means you've got to daily take up your cross and yeah. follow him and be yeah. willing, willing. And really, we don't have it bad compared to, you know, people in Different other countries. countries. We really yeah, don't. I agree. I agree. Really yeah. And as much as we want Jesus to come and rapture us, I, you know, I'm sure the Christians in China and the, you know, 
Christians in Iran, that's one of the fastest growing Christian countries. Those people are really praying for Jesus to come. We all should be praying for Jesus to come instead of thinking about, and you know, in James chapter four, where you brought, brought up, it says, resist the devil and he will flee from you. Draw yeah. close to God and he'll draw close to you. Amen. And it says also in there, I think it says, do not, um, don't you know that fellowship, you adulterers, don't you know that fellowship with the world makes you an enemy to God? I mean, how can that be? And then at the end of that chapter, it talks about don't be making your plans for what you you want to be doing a year from now. Uh-huh. You know? And uh-huh. that's it, that's the reason why, you know, I'm I'm blessed to you know for five and a half years. I've been list I've been living as if I die today or Jesus is coming. And I don't I don't want to be making plans for you know, I mean I've I've talked to some people that are like Oh, Terry, you know, I'd like to do some, I'd like, I'd like to do some ministry to help you build your ministry and grow your channel. And I'm like, that's not my plan. That's not my plan. I've never asked for a penny. I don't want a penny. I don't want my yeah. ministry growing. I want Jesus to come. <laughs> you want you, hey, amen to that. I yeah. want Jesus to come, you know. And yeah. a lot of people do it for popularity, though. You know, and that's one of the things I tell my kids and stuff like that. I'm like, you know what, I don't do this for popularity. I do this to people can give their life to the God. A lot of people are doing it for money and subscribers and mm-hmm. and things like that. And I'm like, you know what? It's all about saving souls. Right. If three people, if three people watch that video, that's probably three people that need to hear the word and they can get saved. I mean, when one soul is saved, the Bible said the angels and they rejoicing in heaven when somebody gets saved. I'm I'm all I'm all about saving souls. I don't care about likes and views and subscriptions. It's all about getting people saved and teaching God's word so they can make an informative decision to give their life to Jesus Christ because we all need Jesus. The lost, they need Jesus. And when we get in, start thinking about the dollar, dollar bills and the money, how much money we can make when we hit a certain subscriber, then that means our focus is not where God wanted to be. It's just not. Right. Yeah. That's right. It's all about (laughs) Jesus. All right, let's let's pray since we've <laughs> probably should wind it up. We could talk for hours. I'm this, and by the way, y'all, this is my first. Con- I mean, I did talk to him just about that we were going to do this today, but um, this is the this is this is the amazing thing about the Holy Spirit, right? It's like we are like minded. This is the first real conversation we've ever had. It's not. It just flows, you know. It just flows because he is truly my brother. And, you know, I'm truly his sister in Christ. Amen. And, Amen. and that is what it is. It's like the Holy Spirit is speaking through us. And my channel verse is Colossians 3.17, which says, Whatever you do or say, do as a representative of the Lord Hallelujah. Jesus. Hallelujah. And um, so, but let me, let me pray. And if you want, you can pray too. Father God, I just thank you so much. And I thank you that you, our technology has worked. I thank you, Lord, that you are going to lead somebody who needed to hear this. And that will be rejoicing in heaven. That when we do get raptured and we get up there, somebody's going to say, Hey, uh, hey, Broderick, hey, Terry, I got here because of this video. And I trust you, Lord, that you will use it for your glory. We thank you so much that you... Um, save us another day we are in the process of being saved every day and we thank you for your your wonderful grace and for the um the joy that is in our hearts because we truly do know you and we love you lord we love you father please please send jesus to come and get us please jesus please get us here um up to see you quickly and lord i do pray for um for the people that are in much worse persecution Lord, we know there are bad things coming. We know that the evil powers um, of the beast system are all over this place. And um, we know that there are wicked things going on with um, in Israel. I, I mean, I, I'm just going to add this because we're not really allowed to talk about it. But in Israel, the uh, toddlers are now going to be getting the thing, the poison. And God, I know that you love your little children and you don't want this happening um, to the Jews particularly because, you know, just terrible things are going to be happening. And so, Lord, we we bind these things and we cast them to the sea of 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 the devil of hell. Lord, we bind these things and we rebuke 
anything that comes against this video. I rebuke anybody who is coming rebuke to anything in Jesus name. In Hallelujah. Jesus name, I'm going to rebuke anybody that comes to this channel to say that this is legalism or that we are Pharisees because they are the Pharisees that say that you can be divorced or remarried. And in Jesus name, we are um, we just pray that you will use this for your glory because it's all for you that we did this. I love you, Jesus. Yes, we do. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right. Okay. I'm going to stop it and see you soon. All right.